Good morning, guys. Welcome to TK's Garage 405. Now you can see my truck and camper behind me and you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, they drove to a campsite here. We did not drive to a campsite. We were actually stranded at this campsite. So we'll get talking about that and show you what's going on here today. We're trying to figure out a plan, but uh, not exactly sure of what we're going to do yet, but we'll figure that out. So let's get to it. pretty good luck I think we just blew the engine in our truck the one that has like 50,000 miles on it just note to self why I hate diesels look at this traffic we're on a interstate in st. Louis here freaking people don't even slow down coming by looking wild look at this Don't bother pulling over or anything or even touching the brakes. It's pretty sketchy, but anyways, whatever, man. We're gonna try to find a tow truck to tow us to the nearest campground. Hopefully we can get towed over there and then I have no idea what we're gonna do. We got two trucks that have been giving us so many problems here. This one won't even start now. It sounded like a rod knock. All right guys, so last night we were coming home from the Michigan, the Michigan Faster Horses Festival here, and we ended up uh, breaking down right in the interstate in St. Louis in the worst possible spot we could have broken down where people are flying by us two inches away, pretty sketchy actually. The tow truck driver wouldn't even take the drive shaft off over there. So we are, we got towed to um, Jellystone Park here. Uh, it was a pull through site you can see, so he could just basically pull us through. So now we're gonna try to get an Uber and uh, see what we're gonna figure out here. So yeah, so that, like I said, we're gonna try to get an Uber, see if we can go, um, I actually, we had just looked at a truck yesterday because I was kind of, this thing was making a couple weird noises and I was like, man, we should tow the camper home with a different truck and just drive this one and take it easy here. Anyways, we're not sure what happened. It sounded like a knock, but the, the tow truck driver thought maybe it might sound like more like a fuel knock. So hoping it's nothing too serious. I pulled the codes on it and uh, the code showed up as a knock sensor code here. So we're going to see what's see what's going on with that when we get home but we're gonna have to tow both home probably separately and then figure it out from there so yeah not sure what's going on but we're gonna go make some miles here we're waiting for an uber right now so we can go look at this truck the guy wasn't home he's actually in the hospital but he called us back after i messaged him and said hey we're kind of stranded here now and he's gonna see if he can get the bill of sale and title signed by his son and all this stuff or whatever and then we'll figure it out from there yeah. Right, so it is 7861. And do you want that on the same card or? Uh, or, no, cash. you guys paid cash. We'll pay yeah. cash. Okay. You can see. You're good. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're on the road here. We ended up renting a car here this morning. We even had a struggle getting that. They ended up having no clean cars and they were kind of, there was only two people so they couldn't pick us up. So we Ubered over, we've managed to 
we kind of pressed our luck there, but we ended up getting a Malibu car here. It wasn't clean, whatever, it was fine. So we're gonna drive over to look at this truck again and drive it. Um, the guy that actually owns this thing is in the hospital right now. He's supposed to be out on Friday, but he's helping us get connected here with his brother. And he's gonna, if we like it and everything, he's gonna sign the bill of sale and a title. And then hopefully we drive this thing home and we don't have any more serious problems here. So can't, can't afford any more. This is starting to be a very expensive concert vacation. So we're still on our way back from Sadie Bass from the last trip here. So. That's the plan anyways, we're gonna go check this thing out. I'll show you what it is when we get there and we'll go from there, so yeah. All right guys, so we ended up buying this truck. Uh, definitely needs a few things for sure. Hopefully it can get us home here. Uh, it wasn't a whole lot of options to buy a vehicle to get home that has a fifth wheel hitch in it in some sort of decent vicinity that we could figure out here. So ended up buying this one and the craziest you can see, we bought it from uh, the owner who was in the hospital. It's like a weird story, but yeah, he's in the hospital. So his brother helped us buy it. Um, we came back to the hospital so we could meet the owner. He's having some health troubles there. So he ended up uh, getting all the paperwork done for us in the meantime and all that stuff there. So we went and signed over the title and all that. And yeah, we're, we're going to go through and get back on the road, but give you a long glance at this thing here. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with this truck, this is a 1995 Dodge. 3500 and it is a v10 and everybody thinks they have viper engines in them which is not true they do have a v10 engine but it's not a viper engine but the torque actually was almost the same as what the vipers had completely different engine though there's a lot of a lot of different stuff about it but they had like 300 horsepower and 450 torque for like 19 1995 that was a lot so the reason that we grabbed this one is because it has a fifth wheel hitch in it so and you can see it needs a hardcore cleaning here. The interior needs to be cleaned out really, really badly. So we're gonna go to the car wash here first, give it a once over cleaning here. She's pretty dirty. Owner had a dog and all that stuff there. So we're gonna give it a hardcore cleaning. It's been sitting the better part of a year here. It does have four back tires just recently put on. The front ones seem okay. Under the hood didn't look too bad, but the AC is not working. Hopefully it's just low on Freon. I don't know why I do this to myself, but anyways, I'm gonna get over to the car wash here and see if we can get this thing cleaned up. Oh, I bought some doozies, but this one's a gooder. Uh, no, no. 
It's on this side. Check what it's on. All right, guys, you can see behind me, we cleaned it up a little bit there. Looks a little better. We went to Walmart and we grabbed a bunch of stuff here. We got some Freon and some other goodies. Uh, basically some knockoff seafoam that was on sale, the Walmart brand of it. I'm gonna put one of those in the gas and one in the oil. Might change the oil tonight. Um, Still need to figure out a towing situation for our towing our truck back there so yeah we'll see what we can figure out there but i'm going to try put free on and hopefully the ac starts working all right guys we just got on the road we're heading back to our campground then we're going to try to figure out how we're going to get these both home um, i've added free on it actually started getting cool so if you do add free on you gotta make sure that you um, find the low side port so I was going to show you and I totally spaced out and recording it but find the low side port which is on the passenger side front on this truck um, it must have just been enough down that the compressor wasn't kicking in so like if you if you turn it on and you check the compressor and it's got if it's too low it won't let the compressor turn on it's like a fail safe so then I had some Freon from Walmart and it's got like a weird gun and I wasn't pushing it hard enough so it wouldn't like release. So I was trying to figure out what was going on. So if you ever get one of the actual Super Tech or whatever the Walmart brand is there and you try to push it, that's you have to really push it to get it to go out. So I just ran it a little bit there. Probably took half a pound, so not nothing crazy. So that was good. I just put enough in that it started getting cold. But this um, the switch on this thing for the the fan won't switch over to defrost it's like kind of seized so i don't know if maybe with a pair of pliers i can get it to turn but so it's on defrost and feet right now it feels like so it's not super cold especially with no tinted windows on it but at least it's some reprieve anyway so um yeah other than that we added some stuff to the engine there and some stuff to the fuel we'll uh, burn that off and see but this thing has like 355 gears in it so on the highway here, I'll show you. It's got a, you can see I'm going like 70, it's under 2000 RPM. So sometimes people say that could be bad. I can't see how with, it says that these motors make like 450 torque by like 2500 RPM. So it probably just run it around without overdrive on. I don't see why there'd be any sort of issue there, but I guess we'll see when I tow something with it. But yeah, so I don't know, it sounds all right and everything. It's stalling out though. It's like got like a misfire there. I don't know if it's old fuel or an injector sticking a little bit maybe, or who knows, could be the idle air sensor. Or it looks like yeah, the previous owner put spark plugs in it. He put those like four, four tip plugs and sometimes engines are touchy with those and they don't like them. So I might have to switch those again and try that. Maybe put some wires in it at the same time. Looks like it's a pain in the rear to run the wires on this truck, but anyways, so we'll see, but I'm gonna get back to our campsite and then we'll try to figure out from there. So another day, another adventure. All right, guys, we're like over halfway home. We just stopped to drain our sewer tanks and gray water tank and all that stuff there. So checking everything over. It's definitely, it set off the, set off the carbon monoxide detector in the truck like in the camper because it's got no tailpipes on it so uh not sure what's going on there but 
It's definitely running rich though, because you can just kind of tell. I said it could be just the misfire thing or whatever, but I don't know if it's, it doesn't seem like anything too serious. Hopefully it's just a sensor, or some bad plugs or wires or something, I'm not sure. There was some rodents, signs of rodents anyways there. So just hoping that not a wire or something didn't get chewed through or whatever, but I'll give it a once over once I'm done with this, getting the other truck home here. But we're like over halfway home here right now. So we should be home in the next few hours here. And then I got to turn around, go back and figure out how I'm going to get the truck, either pull my other trailer and try to figure out a way to load it when it's not running or else I'm going to have to flat tow it with a tow bar and buy a tow bar or something. So. We'll figure that out, but for now, that's what we got going on here. What's up guys? So, made it home with the fifth wheel there. Pretty drama free. This thing, like, smells like terribly like fuel. I don't know if it's just kind of over fueling or something else is going on, but it's definitely misfiring a little bit. I don't know if that's pertaining to this wheel problem, but for the most part, other than that, it ran pretty decent. You could hear you can hear it sputtering a little on the highway there, but it's like I said, it I mean, I thought maybe, which is pretty rare, but I thought, well, maybe there's a little bit old fuel in it. When, we, when I got home there, I pulled the air filter, which was a little bit dirty. It had a cane air and cane and air filter in it, and was definitely a little bit dirty there. So vacuum that out quickly before I hit the road here again. I turned around and went straight back to go pick up my truck. So I just left my house there. So it's like, I think it's like 800 miles round trip. So I'm going to try to get there tonight, hook up and maybe make a few miles tonight yet. So, um, so yeah, this thing has been running pretty decent. What was very surprising considering it's not really running perfect is getting about Six six point eight seven miles per gallon somewhere around that range there, right? Right, they were like high sixes to seven flat, and I was going like seventy five to eighty the whole way home, and it's all hills. It's like rolling hills the whole way. So I thought that was actually super impressive because I think if I could get this, um, if I could get this issue sorted out where it's kind of running rough like that, clean up that fuel problem a little bit there, I think it could get eight miles per gallon towing which would be like that would be pretty impressive for what it is i will say it tows honestly probably better than i thought it would just being how it's running i knew it would tow pretty decent but the problem with it is with this truck it's got 355 gears on it I and mean, i've heard this from a few different people so that cap probably weighs well how it's loaded i don't know probably about ten thousand pounds how it is right now which is a fair bit it drags a fair bit of wind but i will say that camper probably feels lighter than it built like a like a bigger fifth wheel balance pretty good and it cuts the wind pretty good but uh but it still ten thousand pounds right so so i was pretty impressed that it towed it as good as it did through the hills so i actually fiddled around with the cruise and i got the cruise working in it so that's a bonus here so the cruise is actually working in it now that makes it a way nicer experience to drive so yeah, gonna go back and get get this other truck, but like I said, I just filled up with fuel again, cleaned the air filter, I sprayed a little bit of carb cleaner down the intake there because the throttle blades were pretty dirty from the cane air, air filter, like must have been too oiled or something, and like just oiled up the throttle valves, the throttle blades, sorry. <clears throat> so did that quickly, and that was about it. I was gonna hit the road again. I checked the wells to make sure everything's okay there, but. Like I said, for the most part, so when I got the cruise working and I could set the cruise pulling the camper there, downshifted really nice, upshifted how it's supposed to. It actually holds a little better if you have it when you have the cruise set, so that was kind of nice. But yeah, honestly, pretty impressed. I think if it was dialed in good, because like what's happening is it's an overdrive, and an overdrive. That's why I was going faster because. If you're in overdrive and you're at going in overdrive like at 70 mile an hour, it's like 17 or 1800 RPM. It's crazy, actually. So it's like too little, which I could see what people's issue is with that, right? It would almost just be a little bit, if it was just a little taller, probably like a 390 or something along the lines of that would have been probably 
a little bit better for the overdrive towing because I shot overdrive off thinking, am I going to have to tow without that? But it's just, I could, but it just ran so high and then it pulled so good in overdrive. I was like, all right, well, I'll just let it go. So anyways, guys, get back on the road here, but so far so good. I'll keep you updated on what's happening. Morning guys, came to pick up the truck. So this thing had uh, some mounts on it that looked like they were set up for a tow bar already. But as per usual, there's problems. So if you look behind me here, take a look at that. I only went like a quarter of a mile. I was just trying to get it out of the campsite I was in there because they had somebody coming in there today so i just wanted to move it and then i was going to get all the drive shaft off and everything so i just came down the hill here and parked on the pavement so i wasn't laying in the dirt well it bent up those brackets that were there already and pretty much sheared them in half so i was trying to figure out a way i'll show you what's going on here okay so this i bought a tow bar and this tow bar has these brackets and normally you just bolt it to whatever you can find so this thing i was going to bolt it to these which obviously I can't know. They were straight when I started. Um, but I started thinking, I wonder if there's any other holes. So I looked and there was this hole here and that hole there. And I had some pins for my fifth wheel. And so I grabbed it. I'll show you here. This is just, I just happened to have these cause I had them from the other fifth wheel hitch and I threw it in here. Oh man. Oh. See if it's not gonna fit on this one, maybe. Sorry, this is some terrible videoing here. I'm like kind of in the middle of the road here. Okay, so it definitely fits. And it's like just long enough to reach through. I might have to hog that hole out a little bit, but I think I can get them in. So I'm gonna put it like that. Put it through here which is what it's meant for anyways and i think i'm good to go okay guys so i'm taking my drive shaft off because if you run it with the drive shaft on on most transmissions it'll overheat the automatic transmission um and end up pretty much overheating the oil because the pump's not running and end up breaking it so if you've never taken a drive shaft off i'm underneath the back here this is kind of normally how they look there's like two bolts on each side here you just take these out on this particular truck these are 11 millimeter so I got to take those straps off and when you go to pull the cap off don't drop those caps because there's a bunch of little uh, little bearings little beads inside there basically that are basically bearings for it and you don't want to drop those because if you end up losing those you have to get new you have to get a new u-joint so I'm gonna take this off and then uh, we should be good to go. I'll show you the rest of it here. Okay, so I put the I put the straps back on for the U joints. I dropped it down, and you can see this one has a two piece drive shaft. So I'm not pulling it out of the transmission or the transfer case like you normally would. This one's a two wheel drive, so there's no transfer case, but but it has a split joint. So I just got to pull it apart there, and then we'll be on the road. Okay hey guys, so the last thing that I needed here was some lights. I keep buying, man, I've had probably 10 sets of those lights with the cords on them and they always fall off and break or they don't reach or whatever, they're not wide enough. Well, these are these wireless lights that I bought from uh, Harbor Freight and I'll show you how it works. So you can see I got the hazards on here. All it is is like a little wireless transmitter plug it in you can either do the four prong or the seven prong I knew I knew that my seven prong worked so I used that one and it comes with this whole little kit here these these things are good for they they claim up to a hundred hours it comes with this kit that everything comes with there's a 12 volt charger there's a there's a 110 charger uh, I think I paid hundred and thirty dollars for them so they're made by Kenway so we'll see if they last and how they work or whatever biggest experience is that they've always fall off from the wind 
So we'll see if they actually stay on. They do have the lanyards. I really hope they don't fall off, but if they do try to fall, I'll just move them forward on the truck here. But I'm gonna get cleaned up and finally get on the road here. Okay, so I'll give you a rundown of what I got going on here. This is what I've always done over the years, something similar to this. This maybe isn't a perfect idea here, but you can kind of see if you leave it up, leave the steering wheel up and either, sometimes people will put some stretchy cords on or whatever, a couple of them, just enough that it turns, but doesn't get like all wobbly. So you put it in neutral and then you just have the key off pretty much. And that's going to be it. I think I might take the battery cables off because otherwise it's probably going to kill the battery on the way there. Okay, so quick recap of what I did here. Put the lights on, took the drive shaft off. I tied the steering wheel up just a little bit here. We'll see how that works. I made sure that all the bolts on here were tight. I should have checked these ones too. I did not check those. I checked all the crossbars here. Um, I have a safety chain that I might put on here actually before we take off, but that's what these are for. And then the chances of that being the exact right size for that was like, I mean, that was a miracle in itself. So fit right through the frame, perfect length. So I guess I'm gonna give that a go. And uh, like I said, there's the adapter for the, for the wireless um, lights there. And I think that's about it there. So I'm gonna try to get on the road. here if the women don't find you handsome they could at least find you handy <laughs> so if you look what's going on in here there's so much slack in this tow bar so I tried to go get washers and they didn't have any washers here or not enough anyways so I figured well I was gonna get some cable clamps and just tighten them down in there to fill the gap or whatever but couldn't couldn't find any of the right size so I grabbed some vice grips and that should take the slack out of it so at least if, until I could find a place that has something it'll stop it from swaying around hopefully we'll see if this is stupid or not it's not stupid if it works sometimes there's just a sign all right guys just made my last fuel stop it's funny i just wanted to give an actual accurate measurement before i said what kind of fuel mileage this thing's getting i'm driving about 60 to 65 because it's not it was still kind of swaying a little bit and I didn't want it to, it was well, swaying quite a bit actually still. So I tried to fix that at the last stop. But anyways, the last stop there, it was like 12.4 miles per gallon. And last night I was going about 75 to 80 and I drove all the way there on that tank. And then about, I think it was about 80 miles towing back. And that was about 11.6. So 11, just about 11.7 there. So pretty impressive uh, I would not have expected that so I'm honestly kind of blown away by the fuel mileage this thing's getting and it's not even running good 
it's running rich right now so i feel like there's even better gains to be had here so i'm gonna hit the road i'm like an hour and a half from home probably more like two hours ish a little over probably driving slow but getting back on the road but everything else is going okay so far all right guys made it home here so um I had to go fairly slow. I did get the slack out a little bit better at the end there, so it was a little bit better, but I just took it easy anyways in case something something started moving. So, um, so yeah, just kind of a quick recap. You saw my last video there of us going to Michigan for the Faster Horses Festival. This kind of was, uh, it ended the video because I didn't think we'd have any more problems, but here's a whole nother video pertaining to that. So last week's video, oh, our camper AC quit generator quit water pump quit lost 65 gallons of water blew out a tire wrecked the side of the camper um what other stuff there anyways and then on the way back here we had the engine problem with this truck that i was just pulling there so i had to go find another truck so found this particular truck i'll do another video separate on that but yeah just coming in the corner here it was like there was a car behind me and they were kind of getting pushy i should have just right went slow anyways but they were pushing behind me and I kind of came in there to the corner on the gravel there and it actually the truck behind me like just being heavy I guess or whatever it actually pushed me into the corner it kind of like skidded around a little bit I was like oh that was like good to know so that's another reason I just didn't go too fast but yeah still made it home in decent time I don't know what time I left there at probably nine o'clock and it's like 6 30 now so I think it was around 400 miles so yeah made another I guess what 800 1600 more miles than i was planning on but it is what it is i guess so yeah anyways got home i'm actually i think this truck is actually going to be decent i was going to just sell it when we got back and figure out my other truck but uh kind of thinking i might drive this thing man this thing pulling the camper at like 75 there 80 it got like like right right around seven miles per gallon which is pretty impressive i think if i slowed down there i probably could have got you know eight for sure and it's not even running good so we'll see um and then yeah like it's, it was like over 12 today pulling this truck which is crazy i know there's no wind or anything but like that, that's pretty good this truck is probably seven thousand pounds how it sits right now so anyways guys thanks for watching again there make sure you like subscribe share me around on social media I'm trying to grow the channel here um tk's garage 405 on instagram youtube and facebook and Catch you guys on the next ridiculous adventure.